stroll with me down memory lane to just a little over a month ago when Michigan's governor, Gretchen Whitmer, Hair Whitmer of Michigan, as I like to call her, was talking about the mean, big, bad, reopen protesters, these evil white men who had big guns in the state capitol and they were so racist and misogynistic and all they wanted to do was spread the virus and they didn't care about science. They didn't care. She went on The View and said, called some of the protesters in her state racist and misogynistic, urging others to stop encouraging this dangerous reopen protest behavior. Even though, as you recall, I had the, or, the American Patriot Rally organizers on my channel for a full interview. They had coordinated everything with the police. They worked very closely with the police. There are pictures with the protesters and the militiamen with the big guns, those ones that were all over the place. There are pictures of those men with the police laughing and smiling and they're having a grand old time. And Gretchen Wimmer just wanted them to be, to, to portray them as the racist misogynists who don't care about science in Michigan. And she even went so far as to call Vice President Mike Pence to discourage him, or excuse me, to ask him to discourage the protesters from engaging. This is back on May 13th. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer on Monday asked Vice President Mike Pence to discourage continual capital protests over her coronavirus quarantine orders, expressed concern that demonstrators may have carried the virus to rural parts of the state. If discouraging protests is something you would consider doing, I'd be really grateful, Gretchen said on a conference call with Mike Pence and with other governors. What we have seen from the initial protests here is that we've got COVID-19 spreading in rural parts of the state from which people traveled. And so our ability to move on to the next phase and keep re-engaging our economy, I'm just concerned about it. We're going to keep watching these numbers and doing the tests. And if you remember back to around the same time, I had a video on my channel that blatantly called Gretchen Whitmer out for lying because the day after she had this phone call with Mike Pence, she gave a press conference where a reporter at the press conference, and this video is actually in the video on this channel, which YouTube has of course demonetized for no good reason, but there is actually a video in that particular video that shows the press conference in which a reporter asked Gretchen Whitmer, well, what data do you have to support the claim that these protesters carried the virus over to all parts of the state? And she flat out says, I'm not making this up. Go watch the video. She flat out says, I don't have any data. I don't have any data, but obviously, obviously that's what happened. And, you know, of course this was, this was a month ago and Things change pretty quickly. And of course, a couple weeks later, Gretchen, without so much protest about, about these evil protesters, was literally shoulder to shoulder with Black Lives Matter protesters. Because of course, in the state of Michigan, where they literally locked down everything, where a 77-year-old barber had his license pulled by the state because he had the gall to try to reopen his business so he could put food on his table, all of those reopen protesters were evil and racist and misogynistic. But these, the Black Lives Matter protesters, these are the protests that are important. The First Amendment was created for protests like these, not for reopen protesters who happen to be in the opposite political party of Hare Whitmer, but for Black Lives Matter protesters. That, that, that's completely okay. She'll march in lockstep with them. She'll go out not socially distancing at all. One of the, uh, one of the reps actually commented, uh, social distancing is critical to stop the spread of COVID-19 unless you have a great photo opportunity. And, you know, I, I enjoy sometimes these little trips down memory lane. I haven't done a Gretchen watch in a while. Guys, I, I missed I missed my Gretchen watch as I did. But there's a reason I'm bringing this up. It looks as though new information uncovered by the Detroit News. It looks as though Gretchen may have caused an awful lot of deaths in the state of Michigan. She may have actually directly caused them. Because if Donald Trump is responsible for every death in the country... I think we can place at least apparently about 1,900 deaths in the state of Michigan right on Gretchen's doorstep. Let's read. From the Detroit News, Michigan declined nursing home leaders' idea to put COVID-19 patients in vacant centers. This, is, uh, this was last week on June 19th. 
three days after the confirmation of Michigan's first COVID-19 cases, the state's Nursing Home Association leader recommended in a letter to Governor Gretchen Whitmer's administration that empty facilities should be used to quarantine centers to uh, should be used as quarantine centers to avoid widespread infection. So the the nursing home leader in the state basically sent a letter to, to Gretchen to say, use the empty centers to quarantine people. We don't want these people around people. We're going to take a look at that letter in a second. But state officials declined the suggestion of Melissa Samuel, president and CEO of the Healthcare Association of Michigan, and instead set up a system in which infected residents are cared for in isolation areas of nursing home, separate from residents without the virus. So even though the president and CEO of the Healthcare Association of Michigan told Gretchen Whitmer that you should be using empty facilities to house the COVID patients, what Gretchen instead decided to do was to take those COVID patients and put them in nursing homes alongside the most vulnerable population of people. Let's just let that sink in for a second. And she did this while at the same time blaming the reopened protesters for spreading COVID-19 around the state and then a couple weeks later marching literally shoulder to shoulder. Let's take a look at that literally shoulder to shoulder with Black Lives Matters protesters. She she put the sick patients right next to elderly nursing home uh, uh, patients, I guess. I don't like uh, residents, I suppose. She put them together in the same building as though that would, that would in any way, shape or form protect them, protect the most vulnerable population in Michigan from getting this virus. And by the way, I actually have another video on this channel where I show that she already had data from New York to say that this was like not a good idea as well. The policy has been widely criticized by Republicans and at least one Democratic lawmaker who called for separate facilities for caring for older Michigandans Michigan, wait, hang on, Michigandans, I think I said that right, uh, with COVID-19 in a bid to limit the spread of the virus to other elderly and vulnerable individuals. As of Monday, the state reported 1,947 deaths among individuals who lived in nursing home facilities and 20 deaths among the staff. The tallies represented more than a third of the statewide death toll at that point. Overall, two thirds of Michigan's COVID-19 deaths have been individuals 70 years old and older, according to state data. Samuel, whose association represents 353 member facilities, said Friday she didn't know why the state didn't follow the association's recommendation. I think that something should have been explored, you think? And maybe they did go, did, and maybe they did do that and it wasn't shared with us. Samuel made the suggestion about caring for nursing home residents with the coronavirus at vacant and new and unlicensed facilities on March 13th. The letter, which was emailed to state health officials, was recently released through a public records request. And we have the letter right here. Interestingly enough, this letter has actually been taken down off of Scribd. I can't actually access it if I if I click on this link, but what I can do is make this a little bit bigger <laughs> so we can read it this way. March 13th to Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Dear Governor Whitmer, in light of the many actions taken in recent days to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 outbreak in Michigan, I am writing to ask you for assistance in your efforts of nursing home facilities to protect the vulnerable population we serve. Of immediate concern is the closure of all K-12 schools for three weeks or longer. With guidance from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention changing sometimes at the hour, the Healthcare Association of Michigan has been in constant communication with 353 member facilities to ensure they are armed with the most up-to-date information. The frail and elderly we care for are the most vulnerable to this virus and we are doing everything we can to minimize their risk 
The goal and sole focus is to prevent the spread of coronavirus. We believe the well-trained, compassionate staff in facilities across the state are prepared to do just that. In the coming days and weeks, facilities are likely to face workforce and staffing shortages with the closure of K-12 schools and the widespread COVID-19 cases across the state. Furthermore, CMS recently issued guidance that facilities may want to limit exposure of pregnant healthcare workers to COVID-19 patients. We hope that with your leadership, the following steps can be taken to address these challenges. So they address childcare, they address paid sick leave, they address supplemental staffing, they address restricting nursing home visits, they address uh, temporary financial relief, and then they say mitigating an outbreak. Allow for the use of empty, vacant, and new and unlicensed facilities as quarantine centers to avoid widespread infection of nursing facilities. Uh, HCAM members have, uh, have a number of facilities, including in Detroit and Southeast Michigan, that can be used for these purposes. To minimize potential for introducing infection, immediately freeze all licensure and certificate programs, inspections, and ombudsman site visits, except for complaints alleging immediate jeopardy, abuse, or serious harm. The freeze would include routine, annual, and other periodic surveys, as well as ombudsman visits for general and oversight review. Additionally, because of the same concerns over potential for introducing infection, all Medicaid on-site audits should be suspended. Desk audits can continue. So they literally told her, they not only told her to put the patients in these separate facilities away from our vulnerable population. They were actually even saying restrict people into those facilities who are coming in to do kind of like regular course of business stuff because we don't want to risk that they're going to bring the affection from the secure facilities back into the nursing homes. I just don't know what other way to read this, folks. Like, Gretchen Whitmer screwed up on this one. She screwed up bad. And she tried, the thing of it is, too, she tried to blame the protesters for it. This is what pisses me off more than anything about this entire situation. Is she played politics with this situation from the very beginning. Gretchen Whitmer was playing politics. She wanted that VP slot. Looks like there ain't a chance in hell she's going to get it now because, you know, A, she's white. B, she's just way down the list from, from all the other candidates he's looking at. And partially because I think she screwed up so badly in Michigan. But she played politics with this situation. She tried to blame the reopen protesters for, for spreading it around the state when she knew she had recommendations from the association's in her state. Do not do this. Do not take these sick patients and house them next to the most vulnerable population you have in these nursing home facilities. She knew. She did it anyway. And here we are. 2,000 deaths, almost 2,000 deaths in Michigan in these facilities between the patients there and the staff. Biggest population of deaths in the state. How is this not her fault? And again, listen, I think that to take like high level step back here for a second, People get sick. Viruses happen. It is unfortunate. And and I am actually of the, te- of the mind that no one should be to blame for these deaths. People are trying to do the best they can. Every single person in this, Donald Trump, Gretchen Whitmer, they're probably trying to do the best they can. However, you know why I'm holding Gretchen Whitmer's feet to the fire on this one? Because she's blaming every single person but herself. She blames Trump. She blames the reopen protesters. She blames every single person except for herself. So if you're going to dish out the blame, Gretchen, you better be prepared to take it. You better be prepared to take exactly what you have been dishing out for months. Now that there's proof positive that you knew about this, you were warned not to do this, you did it anyway, and almost 2,000 people in these facilities, one third of the deaths in Michigan, girl, they're on your hands. Sorry, it's the way it is. System you set up. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen.